Hello everyone, Cat Weasel here, welcome to the channel and welcome back to our playthrough of Arkham Horror 2nd Edition and the Dust to Dust scenario where we're just about to start episode 13, unlucky for some. But before we do, yes we've got a few things to go through from last turn. First things regard um, Tommy's demise and being de devoured. <laughs> It meant that we got a new character who was Patrice. Remember, Patrice was originally scheduled to actually start the game, but she is a bit OP, so I put her on as first reserve. Well, she's come out now. But as part of her coming out, um, she's actually quite, she came out a little bit early. And the reason for that is it's the dust deck. The dust deck's a bit odd because it takes place right at the start of the turn. And because Tommy died, and uh, was devoured, it counts as at the start of the turn because of the dust deck. That's unusual. You don't normally get devoured until either the movement phase, where you bump into a monster that may devour you, or it'll send you into lost in time and space. And if you're against Yogg-Soth off, that devours you. And uh, sometimes you'll get a, an encounter card, and uh, you may end up having to sort of face off against a ancient one and that can devour you and that's the encounter phase you could get devoured in another world and obviously you can get devoured in the mythos phase it's a very very rare that you get devoured at the start of the upkeep phase and that threw me a little um, when you do replace an investigator they should begin at the start of the next turn so she came out too early but as she finished in a um, in the village commons, which is a street area, she didn't have any encounters or anything, so it's quite easy to roll it back. So we've put her back to the curiosity shop. What else we've done is we've given her a dollar back because she didn't actually catch the train. That was all a dream. She's going to do that this turn <laughs> instead. Um, we also took the nine clues off her because uh, two reasons. One, because she wasn't there, and we're now on. Um, we're now back to ten on the Doom track. Plus, because we went back on the Doom track, um, you don't get those nine clues. It's just the first time that you hit nine that you would get those nine clues. So we've. Uh, We've rolled that back as well, but we don't really need all those clues because we've got a shed load now because of various Mythos cards and stuff. Just look at it up there in Dunwich. There's just tons of clues up there. So we'll just send her up there. So she's only starting now in this upcoming turn. Just forget about all the things that she did during the last turn. Didn't count. All right, one other thing I forgot was uh, to go through a personal story so i'll just do that now so here we go patrice hathaway whatever this presence was that kept handing her patrice knew that she had to get rid of it before something unpleasant happened according to her gypsy friends somewhere in this town there was something that could help her and she would find it no matter what it took and let's see what the pass is the pass is the critic each time Patrice draws a unique item, put a clue token on this card. If there are two clue tokens on this card, place Rhythm Restored in play. And the fail is if Patrice is not unconscious or driven insane, place Soulful Aria in play. The important thing to notice there is draws a unique item. She cannot trade for a unique item because that would be much too easy. Draws means she either goes and buys one from the curiosity shop, for example, or as part of a encounter, she has to draw a card. Then that would count. So that is Patrice and that is her personal story. All right, put that back. And now we're getting ready to go with the upkeep phase. Because of Tommy's devourment, Last turn, that means Zoe's our first player. So uh, let's pop across and see what Zoe is going to do. And here we are with Zoe. 
Where is the dust deck? I hear you cry. Well, we're not going to actually do the dust deck. Why? Because of Patrice's special ability. Other investigators can spend Patrice's clues. So that is what we are going to do. Zoe is going to spend those clues. And that means she doesn't have to draw the dust deck. She only has to spend two because we've only got one warlock and the wizard Waitley on the board. The other warlock we've uh, managed to keep off the board, which is good. So she spent those and that means she doesn't have to draw the dust deck. But she does have to roll for her blessing. Does she keep it? She does indeed because she rolls a five. That's fabulous. Brilliant. Are we changing any of her skill sliders? I don't think we are. We're going to stay 3, 2, 1, 4 and 4, 2. That's fine. And she's just going to do some killing this turn. So that's it for Zoe. Next up is Agnes. And here we are with Agnes. Okay, she's got a big turn. She's currently in another dimension. But we want to get her out of another dimension straight away. So she's going to be casting Find Gate. Now she's got plus one law here. She's also got six law here. So we don't need to change any of this. We do need her to do a lot better than Norman and actually cast Find Gate and pass. And then she can come out of that gate and back to the graveyard and she can look to seal that gate because we've got six gates open. One more opens. Seven gates open, end of game. So we've got to shut a gate very, very quickly. So that's what we're going to try and do. Other than that, I don't think there is anything else for us to do here. So we can move on to our next player, who is Norman. And here we are with Norman. Okay, what he's going to do is uh, he's all set up. He's fine. And... We're not going to change any of his sliders. He is, however, going to head to the curiosity shop because I want him to trade with Patrice. So one of the good things about her, about us having to rewind her turn that didn't happen means that we can actually do some trading with her before she moves off anywhere because Norman goes before Patrice. So he's pretty much going to trade everything to her and then he's going to hang around in the curiosity shop and see if he can buy a replacement weapon because he's going to trade the enchanted knife as well. But uh, other than that, that's it for Norman. Next up is Patrice. And here we are with Patrice. After a bit of trading with Norman, she's going to head up to Dunwich. So she'll be all ready to go and she will hopefully be able to get uh, quite far in Dunwich and she will have the Visions Quest spell, all things being equal. So hopefully she will be able to cast that. Um, she is at three speed to sneak, uh, one fight, four will and five law and zero luck. I don't think those have changed, but because... I've, I've only been playing it essentially for a turn. Um, I just went through that. But I don't think anything's changed there. So we're all right. Okay, that's it for Patrice. Next up is the movement phase. And here we are with Zoe, who's currently in the Merchant District streets. She's still first player, even though she spent those two clues. The first player token moves the start of next turn. So next turn will be Agnes. But for the time being, it is still Zoe. She's going to move one. And yes, she's going to take on Mr. Dolly. So here we are. We're not going to sneak past him. We'll get rid of that for the time being. First thing we've got to do is check up here. Physically resistant and magically resistant. Ignore those because it's Zoe and she's got a special ability where she can ignore those. It's nightmarish one and overwhelming one. So already we've lost one health and one sanity. Then we get onto the horror check and the horror check is minus one. So we'll put that there and 
we'll move that in. Now, for a horror check, she's got a will of four, and she also gets plus one because of a cross, which is five, minus one, four dice. So, come on, Zoe. And she gets one success, which is all she needed, thankfully. <laughs> God, that's rubbish. These are rubbish, these blue dice. Oh, I'm going to have to roll better than that next. So she didn't lose for sanity, which is uh, which is <laughs> which is helpful. Now she's got minus three on the combat check. For her combat check, she has one fight plus the fetch stick, which makes eight because that's plus seven plus the alien device, which is plus two. That's ten. However, it's minus three, which puts us down to seven, minus another one because there's still a heat wave, unfortunately. So what that means is we've got six dice. Six dice and we need three successes. So this is still pretty tough. Good job, she's blessed. Come on, we need three successes. You can do it, Zoe, you're a beast. Oh my God, look at that. That is unbelievable. That is unbelievable. One success. <laughs> okay, so she loses four. Actually, five, doesn't she? She loses um, because of uh, nightmarish. So she's ended up losing five. She's got two health left. And uh, she's just going to have to go again. Doesn't have to do the horror check again, and overwhelming only counts once, so uh, she won't lose another health due to that. But what she's got to do is she's got to roll a lot better than that. I cannot believe that. Okay, come on, Zoe, three successes. That's more like it. Five successes. Why didn't you roll that first time? So she has actually killed this guy. And he's three toughness as well. She's just got... <laughs> she's got loads and loads of trophies. And uh, But she's slowly making her way towards South Church, and which is just down here. And uh, eventually, she'll be able to cash all those in and hopefully bless everybody. But uh, yes, losing... Five. <laughs> Lost five. Five health. Ridiculous. Good job she had seven stamina. And a good job she's got the healing stone. So she can use that start of next turn. But yes, yeah, she's killed the dole. Which is an extremely nasty monster. So well done Zoe. Next up is going to be Agnes. And here we are with Agnes. There she is. And she's going to use fine gate. So this has got a casting modifier of minus one. So she's got seven law altogether, and uh, that means that she'll be rolling six dice. Sanity cost is one, which is why there's a sanity token on there. Now, with Heat Wave, you do, your law goes up by one, but that's just in Arkham. She is currently in another world, so that doesn't count. So she has only got six dice, and we need a success, please. And we get four successes. That's much more like it. So she has casted Find Gate. And that means she can come out of here early. And she goes up there to the graveyard. Ready to try and shut that gate and seal it in the encounter phase. That's it for her. Next up is Norman. And here we are with Norman. He's in Arkham Asylum. He's just going to move three. One, two, three. And because he only moved three, that means he didn't use his map of Arkham. So that is not exhausted. And he meets Patrice here in the Curiosity Shop, where they're going to trade. And he's going to trade her, the King James Bible, his press pass, the map of Arkham, which hasn't been exhausted. The spells, Vision Quest, Alchemical Process, and he's also going to trade her 
the Enchanted Knife, which doesn't count to her personal story because it's a trade. It hasn't been drawn. Okay, those all go to her. In return, she's going to pay him the princely sum of $1. That'll just make him up to $5. So it's just in case when he goes shopping at the Curiosity Shop in a bit, if he does come across a Elder Sign, he will be able to buy it. Right, so we'll swap those over, put them on the different player trays. And that is it for Norman. Next up is Patrice. And here we are with Patrice. Just before she moves off, she's going to trade. <laughs> um, just while I was putting this on her player tray, Alchemical Process, um, you can actually get money off this. And I think it would be better for Norman to keep that. In fact, he probably should have casted it before uh, he moved to the Curiosity Shop because it's an upkeep phase one. He forgot, but he will remember next upkeep. So we'll plonk that back on his uh, on his player tray so she said no 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 you keep that you keep that so he's kept that okay now it's her turn to actually move so she's going to move one to north side two to the train station then she's going to spend a dollar and she's going to catch the train to bishop's brook bridge and then she's going to move into the village commons and she's not going to stay there because she's going to use the map of Arkham and she's going to ignore, exhaust that and get one extra movement point and that means we go to Blasted Heath. She picks up these two clues straight away because she stopped in Blasted Heath so she gets those and just aware of a slight timing issue there with the map of Arkham. Essentially, I exhausted it while she was in Arkham. Yeah? Because <laughs> obviously the map of Arkham is not going to be very good in Dunwich. So she used it while she was in Arkham. And then she used the rest of her movement points to get to Blasted Heath. Somebody would have pointed that out. But uh, that's the way she did it. Okay, so she's in Blasted Heath. But just before she finishes, she's going to cast a spell and she's going to cast Vision Quest. So casting modifier is plus zero, sanity cost is of one and uh, she's ended a movement. And then we want to take all of the clues that are in the Blasted Heath neighbourhood. So that's another four clues. In fact, she gets another clue straight away because of Press Pass. So when she picked those two up, Press pass meant she got a third one. So that puts her on four clues now. And we're going to try and get another four by picking up Devil's Hop Yard and the three on Gardener's Place. And where have I put the spell? I've put it there. Oh, don't get rid of the seal. We need that. And so pop that here. And she's got five, I believe. Has she? Yes, she's got five law, but it's going to be six law because we get plus one because of heat wave. So she's going to be rolling six dice. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And we just need one success. Come on. And we get five, which is one success. So we pick up all these. Another four clues. Excellent stuff. So she's now got eight clues. We can't use press pass again. Uh, it's only once that we can use that, so we don't get an extra clue. But from, what was it, one clue to eight clues in a single turn, that isn't bad, is it? She's done very well there. Okay, that's it for the movement phase. Next up is the Arkham encounter phase. And here we are at the Arkham encounter phase. First up is Zoe. Now, she is not going to have any sort of encounter because she's in a street location. So we can move straight on from her. And next up, it will be Agnes. And here we are with Agnes. She's in the graveyard. 
She's not going to have an encounter because she's going to try and shut this gate. And in fact, let's just say I remembered just in time, she does have an explore token. <laughs> okay, so she's going to try and shut it with her law, obviously, because uh, she's got seven law. And that is going to be eight law because of heat wave here. And she's back in Arkham now, so that uh, kicks in. So she's got eight dice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we just need a single success. Come on. And she gets a shed load of successes there. One, two, three, four. So she gains the another dimension gate. So she gets her first trophy. She's going to spend five clues. One, two, three, four, five. We'll spend five clues to seal that gate. And we've got our fourth seal, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! Get rid of that. And that's fantastic. So we've got another seal. And we can get rid of the explore token now. For the short time it was there. And we can get rid of that stand. Brilliant. Okie dokie. So... Things are looking good. And we've got nothing else to do with Agnes. So it's straight on to Norman. And here we are with Norman at the Curiosity Shop. He's going to do the, instead of having an encounter here, you may draw three unique items. And that means we use a unique item deck. We shall give it a cut. And... One, two, three. There are the three items. We'll put this back. And what did we get? Ooh, the excitement. Obviously, we want an Elder Sign. Holy Water is not an Elder Sign, though it's okay, I suppose. Next one, Elder Sign. Yes, brilliant. Cat Weasel strikes again. And joining the winning team. I'm not even going to bother reading those. They are getting discarded. <laughs> Top banana. So all of his five dollars is going into the supply because he has got an elder sign and he can shut a gate, baby. And I, the unnameable, I'm looking at you. Or one, two, three. Yeah, it'll have to be the unnameable. Because the science building is too far. He got he hasn't got the uh, movement points to do that. But he can get into the unnameable. Which is a minus three gate. But who cares? Because he's got an elder sign. Yes. Yes, yes. Fantastic. Okay, cool. We might win this one yet. We might win this one yet. Okay, that's it for Norman. Next up, it is Patrice. And very quick with Patrice, she is also in a street area, so she does not have an encounter. Also, we've got nobody in another world, so we can skip the other world encounter phase. It's straight to our favourite phase. Oh yes, the laugh and chuckle phase. And here we are at the Mythos phase. Can't wait. Always a delight. The Mythos phase. We love it. Okay. Card. Let's see what we've got. We can't afford a gate to open because we managed to shut one. So that's okay. But uh, we'd rather it didn't. Okay. Forgery. Another headline. Oh, God. Don't do that to me. I saw the red. I thought, gate burst. No. But the gate burst would have been at Wizard Hill. Wizard Hill's got a gate. It hasn't got a seal, so that's fine. Um, we go off the top one on these cards. These are Miskatonic cards. And uh, you go off the top one. But even if um, even the woods has got a gate on it, so we're fine. So uh, because none of those... Because we are using Dunwich. And um, 
we look at Wizard's Hill, but even if we weren't using Dunwich, we'd look at the woods and the woods has got a gate on it as well. So that's great. We do not get a gate. We also do not get a uh, monster surge. You do not get monster surges on gate bursts. So that's cool. Um, if we had any sky monsters, they'd move, but we haven't got any monsters in the sky. So that's cool. And uh, we've got away with it. So uh, good luck. A bit of good luck here. Uh, normally a very nasty card. We've got away with it. Uh, clue appear, clues appear at. So 607 Water Street definitely gets a clue. So there's a couple of clues down, uh, down Kingsport Way. You know what? I forgot all about the rifts as well. I hope a rift isn't going to open. After that piece of good luck, getting a rift open would be grim. Let's have a look. There's another clue to go. Clue is Gardener's Place or the Historical Society. Like the two gates here, you only look at the top one because we do have Dunwich. So it's going to go to Gardener's Place, where we just picked a load up. So we just picked three up from there. It's just full of clues, Gardener's Place. But uh, we'll put that up there. And uh, because... Patrice is actually in Blasted Heath. She doesn't mop that one up because she's not actually in Gardener's Place. She's at Blasted Heath. And, well, that's not too bad. Right, monster movement. We've got Crescents and Pluses. We do have a Plus monster. And that's going to go on black, which means I'm going to have to move everything. Let's get rid of those, though. We're not going to have a gate, so that's good. We may have a Rift token, and as it stands, we're not going to have a monster. So I'll get rid of that. And so he can move on black. He moves up to French Hill, but he's opening up south side. And that's what we want, because we want to get somebody in there to get blessed. Uh, so Zoe can bless them with her millions of trophies. And the other one was Crescents. Oh, we do have a Crescents. And it's moving on, but it's moving on black and it moves into south side. But it's only a maniac, so she should be able to uh, take that on. Uh, we've got a crescent at Central Hill, that's a ghost, it's yellow, so that doesn't move. The vampire is a crescent though, that moves on, is it white? Oh, it moved on white, not on black. So, the maniac meets... The Maniac! <laughs> yes, should have gone on white. So the Maniac actually went to Miskatonic University Street. It's not to Southside. Um, the Vampire, because it's moving on white, that moves to South Shore. So there's a Vampire in South Shore. The other monsters are Circles. So Wizard Waitley and the Warlock doesn't move anyway. And the other one's a square, which is the Loigo up there at Wizard's Hill. So that doesn't move. And its special ability doesn't trigger either. Right, I think that's it for monster movement. That'll do. And Crescent and a plus. Oh, no. Oh, no, it's a white Crescent. A white Crescent. Yeah, goes to the top one. I thought it was going on the bottom one here. That is a crescent and a plus, but the colours are swapped. <laughs> so we're lucky. We got away, but we do get a third one on here. All of our rifts have now got three tokens on each. I think we're going to end up with a rift opening. So ugh, we're running out of these. What is that? Is it Neil's Curiosity Shop? Yes, it is. So that's going to go up here. Can we get somebody down there? I think we've had it. I think a rift is going to come out. Um, but we are on four seals. We've got an elder sign. And both Agnes and Patrice have got a shed load of clues. So we should be able to get somebody in to uh, seal two gates pretty sharpish. We may have to put up with a rift coming out. And if a rift comes out, it'll be fun. <laughs> he says. Right, okay. Let's have a look at this headline. 
Until the end of next turn, any time an investigator draws one or more unique items for any reason, he draws one fewer cards to a minimum of zero. Leave this card in play to indicate this. That means that Patrice is a little bit kiboshed for her personal story because uh, she can't draw any unique items. It also means that we'll have to move uh, Norman. I think drawing counts um, for buying them at the curiosity shop, for example. We'd be moving him anyway. We're going to stick him in the unnameable anyway, so that's that's not too bad. But um, anybody gets a unique item through an encounter or anything, well, they won't get it. Right, I've got to leave this in play. Hang on, I'll get one of my funky little stands. And we'll just put it right in the centre of the board there. So we remember. In fact, let's put it right next to Heatwave. I've been doing a good job of remembering Heatwave. So uh, if we put them right next to each other, hopefully I'll be able to remember. Right, that is it for the Mythos phase. And where have I put the Mythos card? Oh, I put it on there, obviously. Yes, I was lucky to put it on the discard pile, but I won't be able to do that till the end of next turn. Okay, right, so that was a good turn. That was an extremely good turn. All my strategies paid off. I managed to get all those clues through Patrice. Um, I wasn't expecting to pick an Elder Sign up. But uh, it is me, and uh, I did manage to get extremely lucky and pick one out. So that is excellent news. We've got loads and loads of clues after, a, what was it, a couple of turns ago? We were really struggling, but um, a lot of clues came out on the board, and uh, we've been able to hoover them up, which is great. The good thing as well is because Patrice has got so many clues, we can, uh, we can pretty much... Like, forget about the dust deck for a while. Um, at least next turn. Ideally, I'd like to get the dust deck sitting with Patrice. Because um, hopefully what she'll be able to do then is uh, she'll just be able to, like, pick up clues like not nobody's business. And, I mean, th there's just tons of them in um, up there in Dunwich. So hopefully she will be able to keep the dust deck at bay. So that'd be cool. Okey coke. Um, something went wrong, didn't it? Oh, yeah, Zoe. Zoe got, oh, she got in a right scrap with that dole. That dole took, uh, took four health off her. Or was it five health? Took five health off her because um, she didn't manage to kill it first go. But uh, on the rebound, she did manage to kill it. And in fact, did she? Because she used the fetched it twice. Oh, I made that error again. Um, so, oh, I'm going to have to roll that again. Uh, she would have swapped it out for the rifle, which is two less dice. So instead of rolling six, she'd have been rolling four. How many successes did we get? We got five, didn't we? I think we got five successes, so it doesn't matter. We would have got three. So, oh, just, just uh, managed to do that. Um, that was lucky. Yeah, I thought I was going to have to re-roll it then. But, um, no, we got five successes anyway. So, even if uh, two of the dice that we didn't get a success, two of the dice that we got successes on were taken off, we'd still have done it. I think we did five. You'll see it flick across here if I didn't. <laughs> and I will be back from the future to actually roll. But uh, I think I'm fine. I think I don't have to re-roll that because I got enough um, successes anyway. Okay. So, uh, phew, thank God for that. Thank God. Uh, then we got uh, Agnes, sealed the gate. Fantastic. That was just the job. Uh, find gate worked and... Uh, then she managed to say the incantations and managed to seal that gate. We've now got four sealed gates, which is great. And uh, we only need two more and we have the wherewithal to do it. Uh, Zoe's probably going to have to stay at Miskatonic University Streets because the maniacs are there. 
but uh, that should be an easy kill so we should get rid of him and um other than that we've got to get everybody else into um oh i need to get agnes into some sort of um into the science building if i can but that maniac's in the way and agnes is going to be first next turn oh i should have left it zoe first and then she could have got past can't one two three four it'd be four to get to the plateau of leng she has got four movement but that would mean she has no sneak the best of friends she gets a best of friends uh, plus one the relationship card because that's a relationship with zoe but one die to get past i'm just checking all of her spells but uh, there's no spells for her to sort of like sneak past well that's a bit of a bummer i could send her into the unnameable but the, we've got the same problem um which is uh, norman can't make it in time one two three four yeah he's only got three movement and uh ugh, pants yeah that's a bit of a blow that is a bit of a blow but, um, yeah, we're going to have to figure out something else. Uh, we won't be able to get them all into a gate, unfortunately. But, uh, V, um we can get two people into a gate. And, uh, yeah, we'll just do it that way. So, oh, that's a, oh, what a downer. Mm, that's annoyed me. Okay, anyway, right, that's it. Enough chatting um, in between... The end of this turn and the start of next turn i'll have a think about what i'm going to do and uh, thank you so much for watching thank you for all the likes and dislikes for all the views and for all the subscriptions you're all marvelous and uh, anybody who's been across to board game links to upvote the site you've wasted your time because i don't think it's going anymore <laughs> so i should be able to drop that from my patter going forward uh, but for those of you who've liked the videos on board game geek or made a comment or dropped geek gold thank you so much and simulate all my followers on uh, instagram twitter and facebook thank you very much and if you've noticed any errors as normal please let me know and i will try and get them fixed for next turn and uh, hopefully there wasn't any apart from the ones i've spotted Hopefully I managed to roll five successes with Zoe. Otherwise I'll be back very shortly to uh, re-roll that. And uh, yes, that is it for episode 13. I hope you join me for episode 14. But until then, this is me, Cat Weasel, saying toodaloo.